everyone, so welcome to the webinar on how to attract new donors with an alternative way to give. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. We hope you find the information useful and we're thrilled to have Comic Relief here to share some insight into their Red Nose Day campaign. So let's get started. The webinar is presented by myself, Persia. I am the online marketing manager here at Givergy. Um, hello everyone, um, my name is Rosie and I'm a marketing manager at Comic Relief. Hi, I'm Claire Pilcher, I'm the senior public fundraising manager at Comic Relief. And I'm Alison Von Rusby, fundraising consultant at Givergy. So just to have a few housekeeping rules, the webinar is being recorded live. If you do have any questions, please submit them via the chat service. Um, whether you're watching the webinar live or recording after, tweet us your thoughts or any questions you might have. Our Twitter handle is at UK. So just a simple agenda for today. Uh, we'll just be covering the online fundraising landscape, uh, why givergy.com works so well, uh, what items sell, so if you're looking for any examples, and um, we obviously have the case study uh, for Comic Relief's best auction ever, and then some tips to take away for everybody. Yes, yeah, so over the past 10 years, we've seen a dramatic increase in the use of the web. Now people aren't on their phones, they're on a laptop or tablet, where everything is easily accessible on the go. The whole world has had to adapt, and charities now need to focus their attention on fundraising through digital means. Charities have reported a real fundraising fatigue with the same donors at the same event year on year, and are looking for a new way to get people to donate. So we found some, we've done some research into online giving and found some pretty impressive stats. So 62% of donors prefer to give online. Millennials are nearly twice as likely to donate to charity than those aged 55 plus. Online donations made by mobile has risen by 3% in a year. And donations, sorry, donations through websites, social media and apps now account for £26 in every £100 donated in the UK. The percentage of donors made face to kiss online by an email has jumped up by 40% since 2015. And that's my favourite stat because a lot of people think that email as a marketing tool is dying out and this just proves that it's really successful. So a few years ago, as a result of all this, Givergy decided they needed to create a platform to help charities fundraise online, reach a wider audience and target a younger demographic. So uh, welcome to Givergy.com. For anybody who may not be aware, uh, we are an online fundraising platform and we allow charities to place items on your own bespoke charity page, expose the charity and your prizes to our global audience. So uh, we have three different modes um, of auction just to offer some flexibility um, as per prizes that come in. So we have the auction where you simply set the reserve, lots of active competitive bidding, raising as much as possible. Uh, with the prize draw we have the lower price point entry and um, you can enter for maybe a minimum of £5. Takes in maybe a younger demographic, um, allows everybody to enter for just a fiver. And then with the Buy It Now, um, we can use that for uh, multiple identical items. It's as simple as logging in, um, you know, purchasing one or two of the items and getting them there and then. And, you know, if anyone's unsure of, of, of what mode we can best, we have past experience and advise as best we can. Yeah, so since Givergy launched in 2015, um, we've supported over 100 charities. We've raised over a million pounds for their incredible causes. And we've also had over 1 million unique visitors to the website. Um, we average about 120,000 monthly active users, and that's people that come back continually to see what's new. So here's some of our stats. Um, so on the left hand side, you see the age profile. Um, just to note that these stats uh, will constantly change as per campaign. For instance, if we're running a prize draw for a meet and greet with a band for the 1975, you'll probably see the 19% fall for the 18 to 24 year olds. Um, predominantly, we have between the 25 and 34. Uh, so these are kind of people who are uh, professionals, have money in their pocket, and like to obviously purchase nice things. Uh, we also have slightly skewed um, with two-thirds female and one-third male. Again, this can be depending on if it's just Father's Day coming up, Mother's Day, Valentine's, um, anything like that can change them. Um, on the top right, you can see 64% mobile users. Everyone's on their mobile now, and as our site is fully mobile responsive, it just means it's so much easier to just go onto your mobile and not have to um, resort to kind of the tablet or the desktop. 
And then lastly, um, we're in over 200 countries uh, with bidders all around the world. Um, you can see obviously the largest contingent is in the UK and the US, but we have people as far flung as Australia, Hong Kong, and literally anywhere you can think of. So we're going to go to a poll now. Do you have access to money you can't buy, items or experiences? You could just answer it yes or no. We'll just wait for those answers to come in now. Okay, that's interesting. So we're just about to close the poll if anyone wants to submit their answers. Okay, great. So actually, a whopping 67% of people said they do have access to money can't buy items and experiences. That's quite surprising. We find a lot of charities um, come to us and say that they, they just can't access stuff like that. So that's really, really great to hear. Um, so that brings us on to our next slide. The key, char key challenges charities face um, are obtaining items, but obviously not with the people that are on this webinar today. Um, a meet and greet with Ed, Ed Sheeran isn't just going to fall on your doorstep. We know that, but the Comic Relief team will be sharing their story on how they managed to get so many incredible items. Getting support from your ambassadors can be tough, their agents can be very precious, and their social media teams usually schedule posts a few weeks in advance. Best thing to do here is ask them early on and think of ways that they can support without taking too much time out of their schedule. Um, reaching the right audience can also be a challenge, especially for small charities without a database. Gimchi.com has a dedicated marketing team that will ensure your listings reach the right, reach the right people so you don't have to. So what sells? Um, as you can see, we have a, a vast number of categories on the website, and um, some are obviously a bit more popular than other. Um, just to kind of kind of bring it down um, into more kind of relatable um, subjects. Uh, we can give obviously examples on each of these. Um, so just say for a celebrity, obviously you know we have a meet and greet with Coldplay on the site at the moment. Um, theatre, it can be box seats with VIP hospitality. Um, make a nice kind of night out in the town with maybe dinner included. Um, for sport, we have. Um, some of them had box seats or child mascot prizes, which have been hugely popular. Um, with food, we've had um, Gordon Ramsay or Heston Blumenthal cooking for you and your friends, um, which is always a very nice experience. Um, the experience side, it can be Formula One experiences. Um, with art, um, a lot of times we'll have a campaign run in conjunction with an exhibition, so people can obviously uh, see the items that they're bidding on as well. And um, for music, in the past we've had festivals with glamping included and meet and greet and travel, everyone loves a holiday. Um, so we've had private islands in the past, five star um, hotel experiences, um, that will literally appeal to any demographic in my opinion as well. Um, so we have a three tier commission system um, at the moment which is gold, silver and bronze and we'll just go through a few examples of these. Um, so with the bronze, this is the most basic level of commission that we have at present. Um, an example would be on the left hand side, um, there was a signed and framed Leicester City shirt that was donated to Thai Children's Trust. Um, very timely and trend driven at the time because it was the first time they'd won the Premiership in about a million years um, and probably will never happen again. Um, so what had happened was they put this on not really with much expectations, with lots and lots of bidding and we raised a nice amount for them as well. Yeah, so with the bronze tier, the marketing team will also set up retargeting. So that means if you look at an item on the website, you then log on to Facebook, you'll see that item following you around, and that's to get you to go back onto the site and bid. Um, we'll also post across our social channels, that's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We've got really good following on those channels, over 10,000 Instagram followers, and we see really good engagement with those. Uh, next on to the silver tier, so this is our mid-level tier and our most popular one. Um, again, you can see kind of the level of prizes there. Um, an example, as I mentioned earlier, was the child mascot place at Wayne Rooney's testimonial match. There was a lot of competitive bidding by parents for that one, um, and as you can see, it raised a lot of money for NSPCC. Yeah, so with the silver tier, you'll get everything that was mentioned in the bronze tier, so that's social media and retargeting. But you also get a dedicated email campaign, and that goes out to our database of 35,000 people. Um, that database largely comes from the event side of the business. So those are high net worth individuals that attend charity galas. So they've got money, they want to spend it, and they want to support. So it's a great way to get them to see your listing. And then we just move on to the top tier, which is our gold tier. Um, as you can see there, it's kind of quite a lot of 
um, meet and greet, uh, VIP uh, festival tickets. Um, the most recent one in the middle was a 30 minute Skype call uh, session with Gillian Anderson. Um, she wanted something easy to fit into her schedule, wanted to do this um, on, to fundraise for her own charity. And she also did that as a prize draw, so it meant everyone was inclusive. Um, and again, raised uh, a large amount of money for that prize. Yeah, so with the gold tier, as I mentioned before, you get everything that's been previously included, so a dedicated email campaign, retargeting, social media posts. You'll also get PPC, which is pay per click, and that's adverts across social media and Google. So if someone was typing in festival tickets, they'll see a link to your page. Um, we'll also feature you on our homepage, so we've got a moving carousel banner that highlights all the star items. And then we'll get our PR agency, Race Point Global, to write a media alert. Um, they'll reach out to the relevant contacts and social influencers to basically get you some coverage. And as you can see, we've been featured in some pretty amazing publications. And if you get a chance after the webinar, I'd encourage you to head over to digi.com. Um, in the footer, we've got a link to our press room so you can see all the coverage we've secured in the past year and a half. Now we're going to hand over to the Red Nose Day team, team and they're going to tell you all about their um, campaign. Okay, so first of all, uh, just to give you some background, Comic Relief was founded in 1985 with the vision to create a just world free from poverty. And our mission is to drive positive change through the power of entertainment. And we do this through two major campaigns, Sport Relief and Red Nose Day. Um, since the first Red Nose Day in 1987, people have been doing something funny for money across the country in their workplaces in schools um, to raise money to help change people's lives. But it's really important for us to move with the times and we're always looking for new ways for people to get involved and to raise money. And in particular, in 2017, we wanted to explore ways that people could raise money through digital platforms. Um, and Gibbergee provided us um, the perfect platform for us to be able to do this. Um, and so the Red Nose Day, best day, best auction ever was born. Um, the concept behind it started rather organically um, when we realized that we had access to some absolutely brilliant names um, and they were prepared to offer their time to us um, in order for us to raise some money. Um, and initially we wanted eight auction prizes to be included in the best auction ever. This um, exponentially grew to 28 auction prizes and 18 prize draw items. Um, and that formed the basis of our best auction ever. So how did we obtain the right prizes? Well, um, at Comic Relief, we were very lucky to have some amazing artists working with us. And also our director of Red Nose Day, Emma Freud, who had lots of contacts. Um, and she was able to secure us some money can't buy artist experiences, um, which we appreciate not everyone would have access to. But we did find that it really helped to create those experiences that were really unique and money can't buy and that can be done just with some creative thinking and by emailing people or calling up people. A lot of the experiences that we had, so things like the singing lesson with Gareth Malone, um, we had extras that went around that experience. So um, hiring or, or getting access to a studio, for example, with a piano in it and also a nice... Um, a nice lunch um, and what we did we just got on the phone and we just phoned people and we said what we were doing and the fact that they would be promoted by a and um, and that that would get out to lots of people and therefore we managed to secure some brilliant um, prizes um, by blagging really <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> So uh, it sounds really obvious, but it's um, if you don't ask, you don't get. And you'd be amazed how many people do want to help support charity and will contribute um, if you ask them. And just to, just to add to that, I think as well, I think we found that the kind of quirkier the prizes were, the better they performed. And I think that made them a, a bit more PR worthy as well. So, for example, one of the ones that got a lot of PR to pick up was the spray tan and fringe trim with Cordy Winkleman because, let's face it, pretty weird but um, surprisingly popular we raised nearly three thousand pounds off the back of it and i think it's just because when you're ever going to be in a position to you know have a spray tan and a fringe trim with a celebrity um so that was certainly a learning for us um so uh, in terms of how we promoted these items 
Um, some key learnings for us um, was around the, the creative look and feel of the whole thing. So obviously, Givergy's platform really allows us to have that charity page, and you can kind of um, make that look and feel very in line with your brand as much as you can, which was, which was great. We sort of had this idea to create this one big central image, which you can see there in the center, that kind of just brought to life how many artists we had on board and how many items we had available. It made it look really exciting and part of a very self-contained auction campaign. Um, we then produced assets for each individual item. And again, we made sure there was a consistent look and feel creatively across all the imagery we used to promote each item. Um, we certainly prioritized things like social um, when it came to marketing the items, because obviously you can be very targeted in that space. Um, we produced lots of really cool things like gifts and stuff, stuff that just sparks a lot of interest, essentially. And obviously, PR was a huge part of um, gaining interest from the public as well. And again, it helps when you have such high-profile artists on board. Um, the only other thing I would say that um, I think is really crucial when it comes to um, promoting the auction items that you have was just to make sure you get the artists themselves on board with that. Um, it was really valuable for us to ensure that we were able to access their own fan base and network. And what I mean by that is essentially making sure that Ed Sheeran sends out a tweet to say that he's got this incredible opportunity and had to give a G if he wants to take part. Um, I, the best way to do that is to kind of build that in when you're working with the artist on the experience in the first place to ensure that they're willing to help you promote it. Um, again, nobody said no. Everyone was very willing because they, you know, they want their prize to raise as much money as possible. It's a bit of an ego thing for them too. Um, so that's really key, absolutely, in marketing those prizes. Um, so prize draw versus auction is, is, a, is a good question. We ended up doing a, a very strong mix of the two. Um, we started off um, prioritizing auctions um, because that's kind of your, you know, that's the kind of central proposition is, is it, it being an auction platform. Um, we realized very quickly that there could be a lot more potential with the prize draws. Um, and we also, it sort of occurred to us that you know, we pride ourselves on being a very inclusive organization and we didn't want to exclude anyone that maybe couldn't afford to be bidding on um, some of the more pricier um, auction items. But we didn't actually duplicate a lot of them. So, you know, you could, if you had the money and you were desperate to go and you absolutely wanted to guarantee your place with, you know, Michelle Rue um, at the Gavroche, then you could bid. But if you didn't have the money, but you still want to be in with a chance to be there, then you could enter the prize draw instead. And um, some of our items, particularly Doctor Who and Ed Sheeran, we actually raised more money through the prize draw entries than we did by the auction. So that was a huge learning for us. I think there's no um, better option. I think for us, it was having the combination of the two worked really, really well. One thing we did find was that with the prize draw items, they actually got more interest from local media, so that might be something you want to think about. Um, so yeah, we've kind of gone through a lot of these, but for us, our top tip to take away from, from the, the activity we ran with Givergy was to utilize the celebrities involved with the prizes, to hold both auction prize draws simultaneously, and to think outside the box. So that's going back to that point about being a bit creative and a bit quirky, um, to just really make sure that what you're offering is money can't buy. Um, that's definitely one key thing about. Brilliant, thank you to Rosie and Claire for that. I think I think a lot of people on the call as well will have a really kind of interesting um, reaction and, and insight into that. So yeah, that would be great. Um, so how it works? Um, it's really simple. If you have an idea, or if you have an item, or kind of an idea that you maybe want to put forward um, to somebody in your fundraising team, just call us or email us. Um, we're more than happy to consult and advise. Um, if you're unsure, we can either kind of brainstorm if you want. Um, we have obviously past experiences um, of similar loss, but we also, if there's something that's kind of a bit more niche and a bit more obscure, uh, we do have an internal loss team that can help if you're not really sure um, kind of how to value that prize. Um, it's really straightforward and not workload heavy. Um, we do always have clients remark that it's way easier than they initially thought um, once they've gone through the whole process. Um, so you can see, obviously, as well, that you do get that dedicated charity page um, with your own URL link and all of your items are hosted there. So once it's live, it's essentially promote, promote, promote um, from all sides to your database um, and your social media and try and just get as much bidding as possible.
Um, and again, we have no set up costs or hidden fees. That's often a, a question that's asked quite a bit. Um, you'll only be charged commission if your item sells. Obviously, we want your items to sell, but it does just um, create a more kind of risk-free environment um, if you want to obviously have a campaign on board. Yeah, and we've all got the same end goal. Um, so with any campaign that comes on to Gibbage.com, there are a number of services and support that are included. So you'll get real-time reports. You'll have a dedicated account manager on hand to answer any questions you might have, and they'll also deal with the customer service inquiries that come through the site. Um, we have a highly scalable server, so if you know, you're know staying from one direction, tweets about your campaign, and 300,000 people head on to Gibbage.com in under a minute, the site won't crash, everything will run smoothly. Um, we're PCI compliant, which means that um, if anyone enters their card details into the site, they are safe and secure. And we also have pre-authorization of cards, which is actually a game changer in the industry. Um, when someone bids, they'll have to enter their card details. Our system will check that that card is legit. And at the close of the auction, we will automatically charge their card. So that's the end of the webinar. We're just going to answer any questions that have come through um, throughout the presentation. <coughs> So the first question here is for comic relief. This was a good one. So how long before the auction started did you actually start planning everything? Um, so the answer, the, the, the truthful answer is not very long. Um, it came to the opportunity to, to run an auction came to us very, you know, late in the day um, compared to how long we would usually plan an activity on this scale. Um, you know, the one thing I would say is that was that was fine, and Givergy were really positive and helpful with that, and we got things off the ground very, very quickly. They were really cooperative um, with us, which which was really invaluable. Um, in hindsight, I don't know if you agree, <laughs> we would probably give ourselves more time because we had just an enormous amount of items to source imagery for and to get the T's and C's approved by our legal team. You know, all that stuff that you don't necessarily think about takes an awful lot of time, and I think. There was a lot of pressure across multiple departments within our organisation to get that moving, and it potentially would have been less stressful if we'd had maybe a couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question is, what happens if an item doesn't sell? Um, if an item doesn't sell, um, because we are commission-based, we don't charge um, the charity anything. Um, what can happen is we can sometimes look at potentially relisting at a time when there's kind of more similar items on, um, or if there's more kind of a push. Um, with something that might be coming in um, which might fit into something in your schedule. Um, but at the end of the day, as we said, it is risk-free. Um, you don't get obviously charged anything, but you will have had obviously you know, the social media marketing and maybe the email uh, database marketing, depending on what tier uh, you choose. So that actually ties in nicely to another question that's come through. Do you look after all the marketing? Um, we're from a really small charity, so we don't have any social followers. Um, again, you know, we have charities of all sizes, um, with kind of the different tiers, um, we, we'll obviously do as much kind of marketing as, as we can promise um, on that. So we do have charities who do have <clears throat> very non-existent databases and need all of that help. Um, we will always kind of advise the minimum to be done, even on their end, if they don't have a very large database, is to get it out on your social media. Uh, social media has that kind of snowball effect where um, it can get it out to a lot more people um, and a lot of people sharing it as well. Okay, so the next question is, how quickly can you get everything set up? Um, I mean, we can get, we can work very, very quickly and we have at times where um, sometimes we've had tickets come in on a Wednesday for a box seat at Adele and it has to be um, uh, obviously uh, done by, by the Saturday. Um, so what we, we've had to do is we can basically kind of work um, with the charity as, as quickly as you send things in. Um, so we've had times where we've built things in a couple of hours. Obviously, ideally, you know, as, as the girls at Comic Relief said, um, with more of a kind of a lead-in, we have you know, more time to kind of plan the marketing and, and really give it a kind of a go on site. But life doesn't always work like that. There are time-sensitive things that come in. Um, so just call us as soon as you know. Don't hesitate. Um, and we'll work as quickly as possible to get things set up. Okay, so a question for Comic Relief. If you could have one dream item for the charity, what would it be? Yeah, we're just amazing. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting on a piece of paper trying to work that out. I think for a prize draw item, it would be um, something that was sold out but had huge mass appeal, like Glastonbury tickets, alongside a meet and greet with a huge star like Ed Sheeran. I think for a prize draw, that would have really, really flown. Um, for an auction item, 
probably just a huge money can't buy experience, a bit like our Doctor Who experience, or um, yeah, like I, something like that. I yeah, think. it's really it's a very it's a very hard question to answer, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but I think it's definitely Claire's point about something being sold out, something that yeah, you know, is, is like gold dust, like a Glastonbury ticket, and you're the only people that have access to it. So people yeah. have got to come to you if that's you know, if they're desperate, find any way to go. And I think prize draw would be key for that because, um, you know, it'd only be ten, you know, five pounds to enter, which mm. most people are gonna, you know, try it, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so next question. How long should an auction last? Um, we usually say uh, about two weeks. Um, with that two week window you can get everything going. You don't have that kind of lull in activity where you have that initial bidding and then there is that slight lull. Um, it, it kind of grabs people's attention. It doesn't. It means as well that if people are kind of looking at the prize, if it's not closing for maybe four weeks, they'll think, oh, I'll come back to that, and then they forget about it. Obviously, if they bid, they will be emailed or texted if they're um, outbid. But for the prize draws, we kind of say as well, because you're obviously wanting as many people to enter as possible for that five pound entry, keep it open for longer, um, maybe you know four, five, six weeks um, if you want to, depending on the campaign you're running as well. Um, so as I said, that kind of flexibility on time. Okay, great. And this is a question for me. If there is one piece of advice for charities that you would give to help them take control for them to raise more from their items, what would it be? Um, I think it's just to really utilize your own in-house marketing team and make sure that they um, get your campaign out to your database and also that you get your charity, um, your celebrity ambassador to, to support in any way they can. Um, so yeah, I think it, it, it definitely boils down to marketing. Okay, so I think this is the final question. Other than competition in the market, what makes Givergy stand out most? Um, I think there's a few things that make it stand out most. Um, we have the, the three-tiered commission system, um, so it just means that it takes in all charities, from the very large charities to the very small ones, depending on what marketing they have um, as well. I think as well the fact that we have three modes. Um, we have the auction and the prize draw and the buy it now. So again, it offers way more flexibility um, to any clients that are, that are coming in. And as well, we have an amazing marketing team. Um, who do you know a, a lot and kind of put it out as much as possible. Um, so I think basically above the competition, I think we have um, a lot of key things that they don't have at the moment. I think also pre-authorization of cards is my favorite thing about the whole site because that is such a game changer. I mean, on eBay, people just drop off, don't they? You can't get hold of them and they'll just never fulfill their payments. So I think that's a really key thing. Okay, so I think that's all the questions done. Um, if, if you do have any further questions, please get in touch via social media or email. We're on hand to answer any queries you might have. Um, and just want to say, obviously, thank you to Rosie and Claire for coming in and offering that amazing um, insight on their uh, best auction ever. Um, and also, obviously, if you want to raise more for Givergy, if you want to brainstorm, if you want any ideas, or just to kind of ask a few questions, um, you can see my email there, alison.bunworth at givergy.com. Put me in your important contact, put me on speed dial, um, and obviously just give me a call anytime you want. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us on the webinar today. We hope you found the information useful and are feeling inspired to come up with your next online fundraising campaign. Thanks again to Rosie and Claire from Comic Release for joining us today and sharing insight into their Red Nose Day campaign. I'm sure their tips on how to obtain prizes will be appreciated by many. Um, if you do have any questions, as I said, please do not hesitate to get in touch. We'd love to help. And finally, I'd encourage you all to take a look at Givergy.com right now. There's some really cool stuff on there that you can use as inspiration, or you simply might want to enter the current prize draw to meet Coldplay, which is just £5 to enter. So thanks again, hope you have a great day, and bye!